What's up, YouTubers? Today, we're going to talk about the Spyderco Polywog. That is a polywog with one L, not two, to be confused with the actual tadpole or the metamorphosis process of one species or one being becoming another. So, yeah, they got a little bit um, funked up on this one, I think. Um, this is a Blade HQ Resurrection of a Knife originally out, I think, in approximately around 2009. It is designed by Sal Glesser. Or, I'm sorry, Eric Lesser. Yeah, not Sal. Uh, in fact, we'll check that. Yeah. Yeah, that's an Eric Lesser design. Um, it is a 2.3 inch blade made of M4 steel. And it weighs in at 2.4 ounces by my scale. Goes for a price of $185. Ouch. Um, you might say for a little tiny blade like this. And it really truly has about closer to about two inches of actual usable um, blade there so even a little bit under that um this is a seki seki city production knife um out of japan and it they did a good job i think on the whole as far as production they also produced another ball bearing lock one um that was kind of a re-resurrection that was the spider co phoenix so they had that one of my complaints on that one was that they made it out of VG10 steel for a $300 knife and they could have used a higher end steel. Hey, M4, definitely would have appreciated that on that knife. Um, in, in terms of actual use, this one was a tough little dude. Um, this knife is a spear point configuration. Um, it's not a, a strict spear point in the sense that it's centered over here, but it's kind of a downward pointed, but definitely has that nice spear point blade. Um, it's very stout. It's, it's a very low saber grind. Um, not a big fan of that, but they have this little swedge up here that's not cut too much or ground off too much, so it's actually very um, strong. Of course, uh, you know, not, not a huge fan of that. We'll get in, I guess, to some pro, the pros and the cons later, though. This does, in fact, use the ball bearing lock, which is also on that Spyderco Phoenix. Um, and it is the similar mechanism as the one on the Spyderco Manix 2. The, it just doesn't have the cage on it. This has a much bigger um, bearing, as you see right there. So you actually just handle the bearing directly. Um, this is not a fidget-friendly knife. You have to give it some elbow or uh, chicken wing English there in order to actually flick it out. For the most part, this is going to be a slow roll thumb. Um, I actually found it's even a little bit easier just with the uh, index finger on the backhand side. But uh, yeah, this is not kind of a, your, your typical fidget one. Um, yeah, and this one, oh, last thing kind of that you may notice is this one has finger grooves galore, kind of forcing your hand in a certain position. In terms of some comparison knives, not necessarily in this price range, because 185 is an awful lot, but I think in terms of the carry and the size on these, um, for me, the Kaiser Mini Sheepdog, it kind of carried similar in size to that one, where I could fit it in that fifth pocket. That one goes for like $70. Is definitely a much better slicer. Um... But, uh, you know, that's an option. And then also, I, I think maybe even probably the closer one would be the uh, the Wee Banter, the one in 20 CV, which does have the thicker G10 and also the thicker blade stock. A little bit more stout. So, yeah, I, I think this might be a more comparable knife. That goes for, like, I don't know, 120 bucks or so um, in that range. So maybe those would be some alternatives that are competitive and certainly more price competitive for the most part. So... Let's jump into this one. This knife is a tough little bugger. Um, you saw the puncture tests I did with, that was what I guess amounts to a, a gift tin or whatever for a scotch bottle that I had. Um, yeah, and up against the Tanto uh, or Tanto PM2 uh, in S30V steel, this one actually I felt was was much easier on the puncture and did a, did a really good job. It seemed to go deeper than the, um, the, the, the Tanto PM2. So in terms of a, a nice, Great use of M4 steel, tough tool steel. Very, very good on that. Um, the M4 was very well heat treated. Uh, yeah, this one held an edge perfectly. I went ahead and cut some paper right after doing many of those stabs and cuts into tin. So, and it has kept the, you know, it's lost that maybe hair splitting um, robot sharpened steel that you might get from a spider co, but still very functional through the paper on that one. So that was a really good thing. Um, this is definitely one of those things where I don't mind it and I consider it a pro is is the strange design, you know, that, that came from the mind of Eric Lesser. And I, th I think it's kind of some of that thinking out of the box. And it's either some of that thinking out of the box, kind of like they do in some of their designer series where they support designers. Um, or it's just, uh, you know, it's just Eric celebrating Colorado's legalization of marijuana. That could entirely be it because, boy, to come up with this design, you had to have something interesting in your brain going on. Um, so that and then of course the last thing is with a lot of spider knives. This one is nice and um, ambidextrous 
um, left-handed, it, it, you know, this ball bearing locks performs the exact same. Um, and they did make the pocket clip fully reversible onto the other hand side, tip up carry only though. So that I always appreciate that from Spydeco. They do a really good job of that. The cons, let's get into them. There's a lot of them. This knife is ugly. Uh, I just don't see how anybody can look at this knife and say, oh, yeah, that's a good looking knife. Um, and you're going to have to be making a lot of excuses when you pull this out amongst people. It's not like it's a really subtle and discreet one. You know, again, it's small, but it's not particularly discreet. And it definitely announces itself as what am I? So very interesting in that. Um, this is very uncomfortable for a long time to hold in the hand. It fits the, it fits the hand pretty well. But as I um, I was just trying to whittle a little bit to see how this would knife that's, uh, see how this knife would kind of fare holding it for a long time and because it is so dang thin it is not comfortable to sit there and whittle for a long time. In fact, I found that the Kaiser Swags just another knife that I happen to be handling and and um, getting ready to review because it's so much fuller in the hand it was way more comfortable than this. You know, and that's a sixty dollar knife um, and and ultimately I'd want to whittle longer and do a whole chopstick. There's no way I'd be doing a whole chopstick with this one out in the wild. Um, so, you know, there's that. The pocket clip. I also demonstrated that at the opening of this video. The pocket clip is murderous. And in fact, I <laughs> this one is so... The combination of the G10 and this clip spring tension. I do like the um, the wire clips that Spyderco uses. But the spring tension is so dang strong that it, it literally makes my cold steel pocket clip seem like an oil spill on a glass floor. And I didn't appreciate that. It, it's literally a non-functional pocket clip. Yes, I could go ahead and loosen that, but you all know on Spider Coast aggressive G10, and this is it. The two combined, you know what? It just fits in that fifth pocket in your jeans just fine. S slap it in there, you don't even need to worry about the pocket clip. It's not coming out of that thing. So, um, and and really the the last thing which I already kind of previously touched on is there's really only one way to hold this knife. You know, there's no choking back. That's a very unstable and strange position. Um, you know, you get that basically the fist there. Any sort of pull cuts, terrible with all of those finger grooves. Yeah, it's just, there's just no, there's no other comfortable position other than this, you know. And so, for my money, ah, you know, it's kind of a unifunctional in that sense. It'd be great for probably cutting lots of straps, you know, where you had to peel under and cut some of those uh, packaging straps. Would be very good for this. Uh, you know, overall, I didn't hate this knife as much as I did the first couple weeks um, when I kind of played with it a little bit. Um, I think it is kind of a poor value if you're just looking for a utility knife. Um, this is, like I said, this is very strong and tough. But if you're looking for that, just go get a cold steel tough light. It's like what 30, 25 to thirty-five bucks or so. Um, sharpens up quick and easy, and it's got the the uh, just as strong of a locking manual. Well, even stronger, of course, because it's the um, you know the the triad lock or whatever. But so you know, it's it's kind of a poor value knife. Um, the spider cone collector in me is basically wondering if in the end that I wish they hadn't just maybe kept this knife um, discontinued and, and not resurrected it. I actually, even though it was $100 less than the um, this, the Phoenix, there's just a lot less excited to get a, a, about this other than, again, just the re-resurrection of a dead knife. So, uh, overall, yeah, it's it's not, it's not this is not really going to probably satisfy people for utility and probably not even the Spyderco collectors, and I kind of am. So, a little bit of a disappointment. Hope you did enjoy this. If you did, like and subscribe, and uh, have a great day. Take care now. What's up, YouTubers?